Saha from Anita's English classes. Today, children, I am going to explain you the first poem of First Flight book. The first poem, as you can see, I have written it, Dust of Snow, written by Robert Frost. In Standard 9 also, you have read one poem of Robert Frost. Do you remember the poem of Robert Frost? Yes, it was a very nice poem written by Robert Frost. We did it in Standard 9 was uh, Road Not Taken. It was also a very nice poem and we always get the good sense, good uh, fear thinking by Robert Frost. By the poem, he wants to tell the reader, he wants to explain, give the reader some message. In Road Not Taken also, I have explained you all last year that he, through that poem, he wants to uh, give the some uh, give the reader the to think that they should always always choose the correct path in their life. So now let us read the next poem by Robert Frost. This poem is you can see I have written the poem on the board. The way a crow shook or down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day I had viewed. This is a very small poem and you can see the poem contains only 8 lines which is of which is 2 stanza, 4 lines each. Now see, let us through this poem, first I will explain you the meaning of the poem and then I will explain you some of the poetic devices used in the poem. First now see, let us start the poem. The way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow or from a hemlock tree. What do you understand by hemlock? Hemlock is a poisonous plant with small white flowers. So you can see hemlock, crow. When we read about these things, it gives us, these are the auspicious, these are unauspicious words. This gives, it is a bad woman. We don't remember crow or hemlock for a good sign. It is not a good sign. So, we can understand that in the first stanza, the poet is in the negative, in the sad mood. He is not happy. He has a negative thinking. Now, there is one tree. You can see, this is a hemlock tree. And it is covered all with snow. This is covered with snow. Can you understand? This is covered with snow. Now, in its branches, one crow comes and sits here. The crow comes and sits here. And here is the poet standing. Here is the poet standing. Now try to understand. The hemlock tree is covered with snow. And when the crow comes and sit on this, the branches, the movement of the crow is not specified. It is not given anywhere that how, where the crow, kabhi kaise aya, crow ke baatne se wo branch hila, tab wo snow gira. Ya crow se urratha tab snow gira. But it has been given that when the crow came and sat on that branch of hemlock tree, the poet was standing under the branch and as he shook, as he, the way, means as he did his movement, shook down on me the dust of snow. The dust of snow means the snow particle from this hemlock tree fell on poet's head. So it tells that only here the dust is not the dust, the dhul, dirt, it is not the dust. It is here the dust means dust of snow, means the particles of snow which the tree was covered with. So when the crow came and sat, it fell, the dust of snow fell on a poet's head, that is Robert Frost's head from a hemlock tree. I told you all that hemlock is the poisonous plant. It does, it does not give a good uh, sign, good omen. It is not a good omen. Both the crow and the hemlock gives us the bad omen. So, we can understand in the first stanza, the poet is totally in the negative mood. He is not at all happy. He is not in the happy mood. Now, see, first stanza I have explained you. Now, through this, I will explain you the poetic devices also. Some poetic devices, first I have written, see, rhyme sheen. Rhyme sheen means in the junior classes you have read about the rhyme sheen that the rhyming words are called uh, rhyming words the say the words that same sound same is the rhyming word. Can you see each stanza is of four lines and see the last word. Last word when you will see here is crow, me, snow, tree. So we can say see that 
crow is the first line so we name it as a and this crow is rhyming with snow so this is also a now second stanza the last word is me so we will name it as b and the fourth line the last word is tree which rhymes with me so we will name it as b so can you see what is the rhyme scheme of this poem first stanza a b a b a b a b why because the first line rhymes with the third and the second li word rhymes with the last word of the fourth line so all of you understood the rhyme scheme of the first stanza of the poem is a b a b now next poetic device is enjambment now first children try to understand what is enjambment when the same sentence continues to the second line without any punctuation mark it is known as enjambment can you see the first line can you find out any punctuation mark uh, in between these four lines no punctuation mark is there between four lines so when the continue when the line continues one after the another without any punctuation mark it is known as enjambment you can see there is no punctuation mark so all of you must have understood enjambment once again i am explaining you when the same sentence continues in the second line without any punctuation mark it is known as enjambment now third poetic device is assonance what is assonance when the vowel sound is repeated in the closely placed words now see you will see the second line in the second line you can see shook down on me all of you must be knowing what is a vowel vowel means the a e i o u when these words these sound vowel sound is repeated in the closely placed words it is known as assonance so once again see when the vowel sound is repeated in the closely placed words means in one line if the vowel is uh, used if the vowel is used either it is in the middle of the word or in the beginning or at the end it does not matter if the vowel sound is repeated it is assonance so with an example second line you can see the assonance now let us come to the second stanza now see has given my heart a change of mood and saved some part of a day i had rued what do you mean by rued held in regret regret means sorry feeling sorry pastava hona jab hum kisi kaam ka jab humko kisi cheez ka pastava hota hai to that time we regret that thing pastava hoti hai sorry feel karte hain so now in the second stanza through this stanza poet wants to explain that has given my heart means what when he was standing under that tree hamlock tree and when the crow came and sat on the branch of the tree and when it shook the dust of snow fell on poet's head and he tells has given my heart that means he tells after the falling of that dust of snow on his head he has it has given his heart a change of mood so here his mood was negative here was his mood was negative and here his mood changes to here his mood changes to positive so now his thinking is that his mood change after the falling of the snow on his head his mood changes and he he has a nice feeling and he tells and saved some part of a day i had rued i had rued means in the past when he had done something that or he had some bad feeling he had a regret for that so after this incidents when the uh, uh, that snow had fallen on his head he tells that and saved some part the part which he had rued which he had uh, means lost in his sadness had saved that part so he tells that nothing we can change it so uh, here uh, poet means to say the main message robert frost wants to give through this poem is what that we should always have a positive thinking we should not never think anything negative that no this is the bad thing if i am doing going to do this thing it will be bad to me never we should always do our thing with a positive thinking and whenever we do our thing with a positive thinking always it will be a better thing 
so we should keep in mind this thing so main message of this poem is that only that we should have the positive thinking how the poet's mood changed from sadness to happiness so if you understood now see in the next stanza also there are some poetic devices as the rhyming scheme with it a b a b in the same way you see the last word of this stanza also can you see the last word this is heart so here was a b a b so in the next stanza we can name it as c so heart rhymes with part so this is also what c then the second line we can see that it is d mood so it is d and mood rhymes with rude so it is also d so can you see now c d c d so what is the rhyme scheme of this full poem the rhyme scheme of this full poem you can say is a b a b c d c d this is the rhyme scheme of the whole poem like this only you can find the rhyme scheme of any of the poem by looking at the last word of each line now next is electrician electrician is the next poetic device which is used in the second stanza of this poem you can see electrician definition i have written when the consonant sound letter is repeated at the start of the closely placed word can you see the difference assonance i told that it can be used anywhere in the beginning in the middle or at the end but electrician is the repetition of the consonant sound only at the start of the word now see the example i have written had given my heart can you see the first line of the second stanza first line of the second stanza tells us has given it is has not had so has given has given my heart now in this line you can see the first word letter of this has and heart it is same consonant sound h sound so it is we can say that it is electrician electrician keep in mind always remember that electrician will be only when the consonant sound is repeated at the start of the word in the closely placed words in a same line only when it is repeated in the start it is electrician all of you are understanding children now our next poetic device of this poem is consonants it is same or more or less same like exonants you can see the name also assonants is the repetition of the vowel sound now see consonants when the consonant sound is repeated in the closely placed words as i told you alliteration is the repetition of the consonant sound only at the start of the word but consonants is the repetition of the repeated in the closely placed word it does not matter whether it is in between or in the end or in the beginning it is it does not matter so for this i have written given in the c in the last line you can see of the day i had rued means day d i had d and rued can you see here it is in the beginning here it is in the end here it is in the end so it does not matter where the consonant sound is placed but it is placed like this so in the closely placed word when the consonant sound is repeated it is known as consonants so here totally i have written the five poetic devices accord based on this poem so all of you have understood this poem i think now you all will note down this poetic devices and try to understand and any of the poem in the previous years poem also if you read it any poem you read it find out all the poetic devices try to find out the poetic devices these are the poetic devices which the poet used and that stand in standard 9 also i have explained you about this so these are the poetic devices which the poet used to give poet has the license so they use this poetic devices to give the poem a rhythmic sound it gets the rhythm and it has all the meanings so i think all of you must have understood this poem nicely and if you have any doubt you can clarify you can contact to me and uh, call to me and you can clarify it i think this video will be very helpful to you all watch the video carefully read the poem and go through the poetic devices and try to understand it thank you very much